Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Veroni Kenshin, The Beginning, a Japanese action film from 2021 that is the fifth entry to this franchise. However, it is actually a prequel to the other films. Now this begins in 1864. With Japan now open to foreign trade, some seek to end the shogun's rule and restore the emperor's authority. Ambitions swirl together with ideals, Opposing factions face each other, and fighting spreads throughout the land. Before he was a protector, Kenshin was a fearsome assassin known as Batosai. But when he meets the gentle Tomoe Yukishiro, his story begins to change. Now, if you were hoping that Takeru Sato's version of Kenshin would get nasty in this prequel, you will immediately get what you want. Uh, the opening scene has our protagonist slaughtering dudes in bloody fashion. He's actually tied up, almost like captured at the beginning of the film, but somehow uses a short sword in his mouth to kill people. It's a pretty cool opening. Uh, one of the highlights uh, later on is a one-on-one -on -one sword duel that takes place in the middle of, a, uh, of like the forest. That's a really good scene. And then later on, there's a fight in the snow with some assassins who really go on the offensive against Kenshin. You know, we know at this point that he's going to survive since it's a prequel, but he does get messed up pretty good. And I like to see badass protagonists get messed up once in a while. And, uh, yeah, because it shows that he's not invincible. So I, I like that aspect of this. So, yes, you get, a, you get a, a good amount of bloody violence in this, which is nice. Dramatically, we get the big moment, really, near the 10-minute mark. They, they, they move right into this. Uh, when Kenshin kills a particular samurai who gives him his facial scar. And this dead man, of course, was engaged to marry the Tomie, uh, Tomoe character. I keep wanting to say Tomie because I've been, you know, into that uh, manga and horror series for so long. So I gotta train myself to say Tomoe in this review. But in any case, this guy was engaged to her and she's the female lead of the film. So Kenshin crosses paths with her. Uh, not knowing that she was the fiancé of his victim at first. I like how Kenshin's swordsman brethren, the guys that he's with, they start to worry about him. Because this Tomoe girl might steal his heart and blunt his sword, so to speak. So if, you know, if Kenshin falls in love with this girl and he loses his will to fight, the other swordsmen would be at a disadvantage because they recognize his exceptional skill to help achieve victory in this war that's brewing. So I kind of like that as well. There's a lot of different, uh, I guess, ulterior motives at play. Pacing is probably uh, probably the slowest of this franchise. But if you're familiar with like the old school samurai films from back in the day, you probably won't have a problem with this. The fights are spaced out throughout the film, so it's not like you're waiting forever for a fight to occur. But the story is more of like a downer in terms of tone, which kind of weighs the film down a little bit, especially during the second half. I think the first the first half is paced quite nicely. Uh, the second half is a little bit, it's definitely a little bit slow. Dramatically, this movie is the most important of the entire franchise. You know what I mean? Like this scene really kind of defines this character. This scene that comes up early in the film, his relationship with Tomoe, and uh, very important stuff for the story, but it's not as purely entertaining as the other films in the franchise, in my, in my opinion. Even when that awesome music theme hits late in the film, it's used for a dramatic moment, not an action moment. So that should give you an idea of what to expect here. There are some good supporting actors in this. You got Issei Takahashi, uh, Masanobu Ando, uh, which who are new to this franchise. Then you have Kazuki Kitamura and Yosuke Iguchi who return. I think Kazuki had like a small role in the last film, but uh, he has a slightly bigger role in this one. I like the lead actress, Kazumi Arimura. She starred in a Japanese movie called uh, Flying Colors back in like 2015, I believe. And that was a very good movie. And I liked her in that. So I like her as an actress. In this movie, very reserved character. But uh, she does an effective job for the role. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to point out just how talented the director is, Keishi Otomo. This guy's really good. And these Roroni Kenshin films are very slick and well-crafted, 
you, you need to be a really good director to make these work. And some people believe them to be the best live action adaptations of a manga of all time. Uh, especially if you consider like franchises that have like three or more films in them. So I'm really looking forward to see what this guy does next. Maybe he'll continue to partner up, you know what I mean, with Takeru Sato, because they've been they have a really good working relationship together. You know, I hope he kind of stays in the action realm, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Because his you know, the way he directs the action is really good. And um yeah, so we're only catching the beginning. It's another very impressive film in this franchise. Again, not quite as exciting as its predecessors, but it has a very good overall quality to it, and it serves as a very critical piece in the storyline. And if you're watching these movies for the first time, some people might disagree with me on this, but I think you should watch the original trilogy first, and then maybe watch the beginning as your fourth film, and then the final as your fifth film, which is the opposite of how these two films were released in theaters in Japan. They released the final first and the beginning after that. Uh, I don't know. I think the beginning should be your fourth film, and then the final should be your fifth, because the final crescendos to this like phenomenal climax of the franchise, and it, it leaves you feeling really good, whereas this one kind of ends on a downer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It kind of ends on a downer. So... It'll be pretty interesting uh, if, if any of you have, like, your opinions on how a newbie should watch these films and what order they should watch them. It would be interesting to see, because I, I could see some arguments being made for maybe watching the beginning first before the original trilogy, since it's chronological uh, that way. But uh, regardless, if you have not seen these Roroni Kenshin films, definitely check them out. They're very good examples of how live action adaptations can be very uh very high quality and i really hope they release these last two films on blu-ray because i'm 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 itching to get these in my collection but uh they are currently available on netflix so check them out do a double feature if you haven't uh, seen these last two yet and as always we will see you next time